we were talking about the stores in Louisville, the merchants in Louisville, and we were talking about the grocery stores. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we kind of discussed um, how your uncle had all these notes that people owed him that were never paid and that. And then because I was raised in Louisville, I know that how the grocery stores carried the people. I know my mother at one time had a very high grocery bill that we were told you had to pay before you could, you know, charge anymore. So do you think the people in, um, the people went to the grocery store that carried them? Or do you think, because there were so many grocery stores, is it, do you think it's from where they lived? Uh, I mean, not that Louisville was that big where, you know, walking to Jayco's. I can remember going to Jayco's a few times, but not a lot of times, more to Dalby's and to the city market. So do you think that it, it, it's who carried the people or because of the section of town that the people lived in that, that they shopped at that store? Or I think it was probably a little bit of both. I think it's probably where they lived, you know, closest store to them. Uh, the convenience of having groceries delivered. I don't know that all of them delivered groceries. And another one, I think that they kind of patronized, like uh, um, Jaco's store, he was Italian, and I think he had all the, probably, he was friends of, of the, Italians. the Italians, and I think that they, of course, then patronized him. And then that's one of the things I want to talk about, too, is Little Italy was just up the street here by the, by the school, yeah. you know? So people from the Italians, of course, living in Little Italy, would come patronize more of probably this area. I think so. Yeah. I think that's the way it was. So all the stores carried probably the same stuff. Uh, did, now, did Jacobs, do, did they do the Italian sausage? No, they didn't. He was just strictly, um, he had he really wouldn't, I would say he didn't have any deli stuff. It was strictly a, just a grocery store. But he had the meat counter. He had a meat counter. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but he didn't do like he didn't do the, the ethnic. Like yeah. City Market no. Did. And uh, I, I don't remember Dolby so much, but I remember City Market. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, when Joe Lawat came. Yeah, when he opened up his store, then I don't know if the other stores still continued to sell sausage or not, but but that's what he specialized in his his Italian stuff. How old were you when that took place, when, when, when Joe Lock came into town? I was married, so it had to be in the, well, probably the late 50s. So was Jayco's still open at that time? No. So Jayco's was closed. Jake, okay. Yeah, they had closed. So that would have hurt their business by having another. And he basically was mostly Italian-type food, wasn't Joe's? Joe's was, yeah. Yeah, it was. So imported from Italy type food? Um, I think, I don't know that it was so so much imported, it, but the sausage, they made the sausage. Pete made the sausage. Pete. Madonna made the sausage. And and he had, um, um, oh, I would say that Joe's was more of a deli. Okay. Than, than, uh, than like the grocery stores in town. So, did Pete Madonna, was he part owner in that store with Joe, or no. he just worked? He just, he did the sausage. Okay. All right, let's go back. I want to talk a little bit about the telephone company, because your your mother did work at the telephone company. Yeah, she company. did. Mm -hmm. And what was, what was her job there? She was a, a telephone operator, and she got the call when, uh, I think it was, who was the guy that, Fetal, maybe, was the, that was killed in World War II, and my mother got the call for that. For that, that she had to call then and and tell whoever I don't know if it was our city police, if it was the uh, chief of police, I don't know who she had to tell that went up and broke the news to the family. Wow. Yeah. That. I wonder if she got several calls like that. That's the only one that she ever talked about, so I'm sure that's the only one that she got. But uh, other, the op other operators might have gotten. Do you know how uh, many operators there were? Uh, usually, there, during the day, there would be two. 
And at night, uh, one who spent the night there. Do you know who those other operators might have been? Um, I know some of them. Jenny Perella was one. Um, uh, Edith Gwenzi was another. Um, uh, let's see. Henrietta. Um, uh, Bob Henrietta's wife. What's her name? Emma Jane. Emma Jane. Emma Jane. And Duke Damiana. And uh, well, and Mrs. Riddock was the manager, and she lived right there. Mrs. Rick? Riddock. Riddock. Mm -hmm. And she lived right there. So this was the era of uh, party lines. Right. Right. You could have a private line, but it you had to pay more, of course. But there were party lines. You could have two, party, three. I think there were even four party lines. Did you ever get any juice of gossip? Uh, you know, I used to have fun because my mother, I'd go, when my mother worked late till 10, 1030, her shift, I'd go down there and stay with her. And um, she'd let me take the calls. And I learned how to ring them and this sort of thing and occasionally you could push a button down and they couldn't hear you and occasionally you could listen and every once in a while I do that but it was never I never got in and on anything interesting <laughs> <laughs> and of course that was against the law but <laughs> uh, I bet it was kind of fun though it was it was fun to hear somebody's conversation well, let's go on and, and let's talk a little bit about the um, culture of Louisville. Uh, it was divided into sections. So do you want to speak to some of that? Uh, you mean like Little Italy, Maine, and Frenchtown? Frenchtown and that, yeah. mm -hmm. I don't know how it got their names because uh, Little Italy was composed of some Italians. and there were, But there were a lot of other nationalities living there. Uh, French town was composed of a lot of French people, but there were a lot of Italians that lived there. In fact, Eugene's family lived in French town. Tassoni's lived in French town. There, so, so I don't know how it got these names, but anyway, that's. You think maybe when they first came here, when people first came here, that little Italy formed because maybe it was just Italians in the beginning. I don't know, because my grandfather came right here, I mean, in this area that we live now, in the middle of town, and uh, and that's where all the LaSalle's came, and and Del Pizza's all came, and none of them lived in Little Italy. There you go. So I don't know where it came, but what just... What year did your grandfather come? What was that? Do you remember? Uh, let's see. It had to be in the 1800s, the late 1800s. So were, were the families on Main Street, were they mostly Italian, or was it a pretty good mix? In it was a mix. It was a mix. And never any um, bad blood between the Italians and the French or the French and the... No. Italians, no? no, but Joe Del Pitts, who lived three block, three doors up from us on Main Street, uh, said that, that uh, at one time the Ku Klux Klan was, you know, in... Louisville, pretty, uh, they were pretty active here. I have, I've heard that on several different Yeah, occasions. well, his, one, one night his wife was uh, out sitting on the porch and she ran in the house and said, Joe, Joe, come on down, come and see, there's a parade. And so, <laughs> so Joe came running out and here were the Ku Klux Klan on their horses and walking down the street and Rosie thought it was a parade. <laughs> It was the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> and why did we have to have it? I mean, why were they here? Because, I mean, in the South, of course, you know, problems with with uh, the black race and that. But why in Louisville? What because of the, the because of the Italians and the Mexican so, people. So it was they were mm -hmm. here to mm -hmm. try to right. drive them out or right. whatever, or right. make their life miserable. The right. Italians and the Mexican mm -hmm. people. Oh, I wonder who was in that. Who was in the clan? Well, um, years ago, uh, Nadine Crancy and um, and I interviewed some of our older people, mm -hmm. 
and uh, we told them not to mention names. We just didn't think that that would be proper Probably to mention not, names. Yeah. And um, when they told that story, they came out with all the names. The anyway, <laughs> anyway so so I do know a lot of who the Klu Klux Klan were. Well, we'll have to talk about that after. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, what were some of the traditions that your family <laughs> brought from the old country? What are some of the things that um, that you do today as a family uh, that maybe came from? Well, I think that our Christmas Eve dinner is probably the the most traditional of any of the things that we do. And we have the traditional, well, now we're getting, the kids are getting older and they're getting married, so we're having to get other food. But we have the traditional fish dinner. So isn't it like a 13-course? 13 13-course. 13 course, it, it's good luck to have 13, uh, 13 course. Uh, doesn't mean you have to have 13 courses, but that includes, well, I, I, I include the relish dish and the salad. And oh, you count those as dishes? I count those as dishes. Okay. And, um, but, yeah, it is, and it's, and it's all fish. Um, so start from, start from being a kid, and here, here's Christmas Eve. Okay. Tell, tell the story of Virginia on Christmas Eve. Okay, we would, on Christmas Eve, we would go either come to my Aunt Anne's house or over to my Aunt Kate's, and we would have the traditional dinner, and it would start early because they they had so many different types of fish. Even in the store, I can remember my uncle, uh, Professor, cleaning an eel, and, and, and the thick, the skin on an eel was so thick that he had to use a pliers, and not a pliers, what would it be, a, 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 a tin shears, to to cut the skin off of that eel, and I can remember that we and and so the preparation of all those fish. Now you can get them all prepared, but they had to prepare all the fish. So how did they cook the eel? I mean, was it? I mean, you, once they skinned it. You know, I don't remember. I don't remember. I just as a little child, I can remember that thing that looked like a snake, and and he, yeah, and he had he he would have it on the butcher block in the store and would be cutting it with those tin shears. So they had to bring that. I mean, that's not something you get in this area, so that had to be. Well, there were fish markets in Denver. Yeah. And so I'm sure that's where he got it. Which had to bring him in from wherever. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what other fish? And then we had bacala, which is codfish. And how was that prepared? Um, in a soup and also um, in a salad. And then we had squid. And that was, how was that prepared? Fried. Fried squid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also uh, calamari, which is squid, really. But the tubes were oh. stuffed, uh, stuffed with uh, ricotta and um, eggs and parsley, baked in the oven with tomato. Mm -hmm. And then we had macaroni and that was uh, spaghetti with um, garlic and um, anchovies. And was it cooked in butter or olive oil? Olive oil. Olive oil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything was cooked in olive oil. And we had uh, uh, what they called pasta fuzzle, and that's beans and, uh, and, and pasta. Um, Never had the the shrimp and those kind and the lobster and the crab like they do now. We never had those kind of fish you when I was little. Had more of the old country. Old like country fight. Uh huh. In the, right you know, in the old country. Which probably was very prevalent there. They probably you know because they lived closer to the sea and right. you know to the water, and so. Well, and I think the the people the the other fish. Um, I had never tasted a shrimp. I didn't even know what a shrimp was till I was in high school. Mm -hmm. And we went out to eat one time. And this Bev uh, Riddock oh, uh, ordered, a sh ordered shrimp. And I thought, what in the heck's a shrimp? But that was the first, as much fish as I was raised on, that was the first time I'd ever even heard or seen a shrimp. I'll be done. What about herring? 
Isn't that one of the traditions? Or is no, that we didn't have herring. Mm -mm. Pickled herring or whatever? No. Mm -mm. Okay. So what were, uh, of course, pasta was one of the main yeah, dishes. Yeah, the main dishes. Uh, and then, of and course, your desserts. I was just going to yeah. talk about the Well, they, they made uh, the pizzelles and twist. And you might explain what the pizzelles are. Pizzelles are made with an iron, and they look like a waffle. And they're just butter and eggs and flour and sugar. And, of course, now we have the electric uh, pizzelle. Irons, irons, yeah. Tell what. They used, well, they made them on coal stoves. And this and and the iron that they used had to weigh, I bet I would say about eight or nine pounds. At least, yeah. And even I did that when I first got married. I did things I never dreamed I'd do. Uh, I made them on a coal stove because when we first got married, we had a coal stove. Mm -hmm. So you'd put your you'd put your batter in, and you'd cook them on one side and flip it to right. the other side. Mm -hmm. Right. You had yeah. to do that. Yeah. Not like the electric ones. Yeah, and how many how many cookies did a batch make? About thirteen dozen, twelve or thirteen dozen. So stand over a coal stove with yeah. a hot with a hot pizzel iron uh, to make the traditional cookies. Cookies, Italian cookies. That and then they they fried the twisters. All this had to be done on a coal stove. So you're. And so the twisters were homemade bread or the, the, the sweet dough. Sweet or? dough, sweet dough fried. And and did they roll it out and then twist it or? How yeah, did you, you ro rolled it out and made like bows out of them. Okay, and then after that, after you deep fried them, did you powdered sugar or honey? Okay, or both. Or both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then any other kind of sweets? Uh, yeah, they had biscuit, which is a kind of a biscuit type cookie, and. Um, that's all I remember then. Oh, they made the traditional fruit cakes and date nut cakes, that kind of stuff. Now, I remember you telling me a story, though, about an orange at Christmas time. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's something that, that, that was on the DeRose side. They sliced the orange, put it, laid it out on a plate, put olive oil and pepper on it, and a little salt. So is that, and, that, and do you still do that today? Yes, I do. We have a little interruption here. Oh, dear. You want me to stop? Yeah, I want to stop. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so that was a DeRose tradition. That was a DeRose tradition, and I still do it. Nobody eats them, but if I don't have them, they'll say, where are the... To me, where are the uh, oranges? So I make them every on uh, Christmas, and I make them on Easter. Just how many oranges do you do? That nobody I only eats? do one now, but I used to do a bunch. Yeah. But now I do one orange just so they're there. So that they're, and you don't eat it either. Yeah, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other traditions on the DeRose side? No, they're about the same. Okay. But that's one that we didn't do. So preparing for a Christmas Eve dinner took. Well, I want to say an army, but it didn't. It just took a couple of women working really, really hard for several hours of the day. Yeah, it did. Uh, they worked together, uh, my aunts and my mother. and But but um, when I did it, I did it myself. And so most of these traditions are still carried out today. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And we have we have Easter tradi traditions too. What do you do on what is your Easter? Uh, well, I make a chaton, which is a sausage pie. And do you know what that means? Because I maybe no, too, I, but don't. I don't know what it means. Chaton. I don't know yeah. what it means either. Okay. I think it maybe means shot sausage pie, but I'm not sure. Probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I make a, a pies, ricotta pies. So the sweet. The sweet, the sweet with cheese pies. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I make that with ricotta and and uh, a Philadelphia cream cheese and uh, orange juice. Oh, not lemon juice, orange juice. Orange juice. Oh. And orange juice and orange zest. Okay, because I've had them with the lemon. No, mine are orange. Oh, okay, I'm coming to your house next. Yeah, for a piece. they're really good. <laughs> yeah, no, I love them. <laughs> and so, any any other 
is it basically a ham and all that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And and um, that, I used to do the twisters and everything on Easter too, but I don't do it anymore. A lot of work. Yeah. So uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, doctors and illnesses when you were a kid and, and the doctors from town. Uh... Well, when, we, when I was a kid, we had one doctor, Dr. Cassidy, and he did everything. He delivered the babies, and he, he in fact, he delivered two of my children. Uh, he charged $25.00. Eugene was in college when I had Reggie, and of course we didn't have any money in, so Dr. Cassidy just charged us $25 to deliver her. And I think the same with Jeannie. Shelly was born in, in um, I mean, I had a pediatrician with, because with Dr. Cassidy, having a baby with Dr. Cassidy was like having a baby in the field, because he didn't give you anything to help you along with the pain. Just and, yeah, and so we had him for a long time. Then we got a few more doctors coming in, and a few more. And then, then there was a period where we had no doctor here. Oh wow! Didn't and that, yeah, that was. Well, I was. I, that was, like in the in the six seventies. There wasn't any doctor in town. So we went kind of from Doctor Cassidy, and then was Doctor Bach. Doctor. Dr. Bartholomew, too, wasn't there? No, I Dr. Bartholomew before. was before. before. So it would be Dr. Cassidy and Dr. Bach. And Dr. Bach and, um, oh, I can't remember the other doctor's name. But then, the, but we went to have it. Bresnahan, too. Bresnahan, yeah. Yeah. But then, like I say, we went from having four or five to having none. Mm -hmm. So Lawrence Henrietta and I decided that we had to have a doctor in town. So we started working to get a doctor in town, and we came along, and, and um, Dr. Hibbard came into town. So Lawrence and I kept working, and finally we got the hospital in town. So you were, you were one of the people that worked mm -hmm. on getting that hospital. Mm -hmm. So did, um, was the grant for the hospital, was that donated by Spicer? Did, did, did... I think it was donated by Spicer. Okay. Um, where was it? That's that's where the uh, Avista Hospital is. And you volunteered there. Yeah, I volunteered at the at the information desk at the hospital for oh about ten years, and then I was also on the uh, board at the hospital for, oh, for about five years. Mm -hmm. But you did a lot of volunteer work that we're going to talk about a little bit, but. Um, let's go and talk about your school years. Uh, where did you first attend school? Was it here in Lewis? No, I attended Bryant and Webster in, Lewis, in Denver uh, till I was in the third grade. My dad died in October, so I had just started school in the third grade. So we moved here when I was in the third grade. My brother was in the sixth. And, and, Lewis, and, Lewis. Lewis, and I went to Louisville Elementary, which was where Memory Square is now. Who were some of your teachers? Oh, Mrs. Callahan. Uh, uh, let's see, Mrs. Gibson. Uh, I can't remember. I guess. So, Mrs. Callahan would be the lower grade. Third grade. Third mm -hmm. grade. Gibson was sixth. Did Did they have music programs? Yes, they did. They had a music teacher. Did you play an instrument or anything, or did you, were you in the... No, <coughs> I didn't. So, were there other kids from, well, I'm sure they're from different ethnic groups that went to school with you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a mixture. Uh, a lot of the kids, a lot of, well, not a lot, but I, there, some of the kids went to the Catholic school that we all joined up in the ninth grade in, in uh, Louisville High School. High school. So then you went ahead and went to Louisville High School and graduated from Louisville High mm -hmm. School. What mm -hmm. year did you graduate? 1950. So tell, us, what, tell me some about some of the activities at the high school. Well, um, I was on the volleyball team. As a matter of fact, that was the only sport, competitive sport that they had. <coughs> Excuse me. And I, I was... 
I was all conference volleyball. Little Miss Shorty here was <laughs> how that came about. But did you play the net? <laughs> I did. I did. I played all positions. Um, I guess I was just feisty enough. I don't know. And um, then we had intramural basketball, girls basketball. And I'm sure because I know I only got to play half court, so I'm sure. Yeah, it was half court. Half court. But it was half court. Us girls run half court. Yeah, half court. And I was always very disgusted. In a matter of fact, I was very disgusted that the girls couldn't take part in the boys' sports. We didn't have a track team, so I'd go out lots of times and run the track with the boys. And there were many times that they would be upset about it. And one time I was running around the track and I was jumping the hurdles. And when I came back, the boys had raised the hurdles. And I didn't realize that they were raised. And I went, came running as fast as I could to jump that hurdle. And it was up and I went flying. And they didn't do it to be mean. I think they just thought they were being smart. But anyway, um, I wanted to play. I just thought girls should be able to play. I guess I was a women's liver before they knew what it was. Before they knew what it was. <laughs> Which is probably why you were instrumental in bringing some of the girls' uh, sports to us. Oh, I think so. And because uh, I know you, you helped with the, the girls' baseball, is mm -hmm. that right? Mm -hmm. So was it softball or was it baseball? What, what was it that they It was played? softball. It was softball. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, it was softball. Well, we lived in a man's world for a, for a long, long yeah, time. Yeah, we you did. Know, we did. Everything centered around them. Exactly. And, and uh, it's nice now that we can say that it centers around us, too. Yeah, we're, we're part of it. So did you, uh, I think it's very interesting to compare the school dances back then and the school dances now, the, the, the activities like the homecomings and the proms. What were your homecoming? What was what was the activities of a homecoming? Uh, oh, our homecoming was um, just to dance. We had the game, and then we had I, we had the dance. And when I was a senior, I was homecoming queen. Yeah. And were you a cheerleader? I was a cheerleader. Okay. And uh, um, who was the king? Pete Smart. Oh, really? Pete mm -hmm. Smart. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and and oh, you were asking about the dances, and we we got to we decorate for every dance. Uh, prom, of course, it was extra special. We took many many days doing that, but they didn't care what we did, and we put streamers up, and we made um, a place for the king and queen, and. Was it kept a big secret then like it was when I was in school? I mean, it was like once basketball was over, the gym became the junior class's uh, project. Mm -hmm. And it was locked and... No, I don't think it was I don't think it was that big a secret because right in the middle of ours, we, we were going to have our prom in May and we were decorating for the prom in May and we changed our mind right in the middle of it and decided to have April showers instead. So we had to move it up to April. <laughs> <laughs> now that's pretty good that they could fit that in the schedule. Yeah. You know, of course the schedule. Back the then schedule was, back then wasn't like it is now. Right. So it didn't go off to Denver for dances. No. And, uh, and what was so neat about it is all the parents had come and they'd. It was in the gym, so they'd sit up in the balcony and watch their kids and all the kids dressed up in their beautiful dresses and the boys looked so nice. They didn't go out and rent tuxedos. And uh, I don't know how many Did proms. You drive in the limo to the prom? No, and I don't know how many times we walked to the prom. <laughs> <laughs> I think probably when I was a junior and senior, we got to uh, somebody had the car. Right. <laughs> But other than that, no. That's quite different today. Oh, yeah. Anything. Yeah. And the parents, we had a dinner before, but the parents had served the dinner. Right. So they cooked and served the dinner, so for the juniors and seniors. And they didn't, didn't they kind of do that for the graduation too, like baccalaureate? Yeah, and that baccalaureate. Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. They just celebrated at, at, at the school. school. At the school. So the school was a really center for, for the traditions of town oh yeah I absolutely yeah. absolutely 
and I get a big kick out of listening to people that say, kids, my kids will look at pictures and they'll say, everybody dressed up. To oh, yeah. The parents to go to the school. And, they and did. The father wore a suit and the mother wore a dress when they went up for meetings or something. Well, we even wore dresses to yeah. school. We never wore pants to school or jeans or anything. So you didn't get to wear jeans? Mm -mm. Yeah, we were kind mm -mm. of the first... About no, that. we wore dresses. What about your cheerleading uniforms? What were they? Were they skirts? Were they pants? Skirts. We had we had a skirt, blouse, and a vest. And uh, and if we needed a coat, because it was cold, we had to borrow one of the football players' letter jackets. Talk about the rivalries. Oh boy, the well the big rivalry was between Louisville and Lafayette, and. Um, it would get out of hand sometimes. I mean, it was that bad. Do you think it was the students or the parents? The parents, definitely the parents. Yeah. I think the kids, the kids could have gotten around. And I worried when Louisville and Centaurus, uh, Louisville and Lafayette, were in at Centaurus because not because of the kids, because of the parents, because there was such a a bad rivalry when we were in school. Yeah, one I, to show you the kind of rivalry we had. Uh, I was a cheerleader, and we were cheering in Lafayette. And I went. Um, I didn't go to the restroom, but my the other two cheerleaders went into the restroom. And this little girl from Lafayette came in, and she says, "Where's that other cheerleader?" And they said, "Well, she's outside." And she says, "Well, good thing because I was going to beat her up." But I didn't even know her. I mean, that's the kind of thing there was. Maybe I was cheering a little too hard or did, got on. I don't know. But I mean, you know. That, well, I could have done that too. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so what were your plans after graduation? Did you have plans for a career or did yes, you get married? Yes, I did. I had plans for a career. I had everything ready to go to college. And Eugene, I was going with Eugene at the time. And he was in college. He was a, a senior in college. When I graduated from high school, he was a, uh, going to be a senior in high school, a college. And at that time, there was a Vietnam War. <coughs> and so he said, I'm going to have to go to the war anyway, so why don't we get married? So instead of going to college, I got married. And then he went off to work. No, he didn't. He didn't. <coughs> um, he didn't have to go because then we got married and I got pregnant with Reggie and they weren't taking men who had children. Oh. So. And then he went off and became a teacher, right? Isn't right. He, he became a teacher in Denver. Mm -hmm. And we, and that, he commuted for 31 years to Denver. And the reason being is when he took the job in Denver, he said, shall we move to Denver? What, what should we do? And we debated and he decided that he'd rather ride back and forth and drive than raise the kids in Denver. We wanted to raise them here in Louisville. Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a minute, but I'd like to talk to you about uh, the war years. What, what are your memories of the Second World War? What was it like in town? And, and did you know people that went to war? Oh yeah, oh yeah. All my friends had brothers that went to war. And I can remember sitting on the slide at the grade school in the third grade talking about the war. Talking about it, it had just happened. Uh -huh. and, and talking about uh, the next day at school, how awful it was. And a couple of the kids were crying because their brothers had gone, was gonna go, were going to go sign up for the service. And I remember that very vividly. So sad time. Yeah, it was a sad third, time. Third it was, and I had a cousin. I, I thought I was a big shot because I had a cousin who was in it, Italy, and he was a, um, and so he wrote to me, and and they had what they call I think it was called email, and it was a little letter that had been um, censored, and I guess they copied them and then sent them, and it was really neat to get that kind of a letter. Do you remember any of the, the names of our boys that went? Oh, gee, yes. Like I say, all my friends went. Kenny Thompson. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, 
McHugh, Pat McHugh, uh, Lawrence Henrietta, Lawrence Carancy, um, just to name a few. There's just, it could go on and on. Do you remember when the war ended? I, well, yeah, I do. When the war, <laughs> when the war ended, there was a big celebration downtown. And um, this friend of mine, his parents, her grandparents had saved the confetti from when their, her mother had gotten married. So we were out throwing it on the streets and having the best time. My mother made my brother go home. And my brother he, who was older than Who you. was older than I. Anyway, he went, she, he, she made him go home and, and I was all over town on the uh, Hennings ambulance. Madrine and I sat on the fender and we went all over town throwing confetti and and being happy and my mother had no idea where I was <laughs> so it was a happy time it was a happy time a lot of the kids went up to El Dorado and celebrated and uh, it was just a real happy time yes it it was I could uh, I would imagine it was pretty busy it, Town. Yeah, it was it was Canada. booming. Mm -hmm. So let's go talk and let's talk about your your marriage and your children and um, and your life uh, as a married woman. Okay. So it, it was uh, was uh, Eugene your childhood sweetheart? Was he? I mean. Yeah, he was. I started going with Eugene uh, when I was a, a freshman in high school. In the eighth grade, he. He, and he was a senior. But in the eighth grade, he was my brother's best friend, and they were painting my mother's house. And I thought he was kind of cute, so I was hanging around. And when I left, he said to my brother, you know, someday I'm going to marry your sister. And my brother just about fell off the ladder laughing. And that he, he said he knew when he, that, that he was going to marry me. And I just thought he was cute, senior high school. <laughs> But anyway, he went off to college, and I was in high school, and I always said that was a good way to go because he was up there, I don't know what he was doing, and I was down here, and he didn't know what I was doing. Right. So I think this is why it worked out so well. <laughs> so you really didn't date very much then when you were in high school? No, I didn't. I didn't. And I, I'd like to have you hold this picture up of you. And oh, okay. When you got married. This, is, okay, this is 60 years ago. How did he get his name, Chooch? Uh, when, he, when he was a little kid, um, George, Tony, and his brother would always tease him because every time the, choo, the train went by their house, Eugene was little, and he'd go, choo, 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 choo. So they, so they named him Chooch. Oh, that's great. And then what about his brother, Long Jack? How did Long Jack get his name? That I have no idea. <laughs> That'll be another interview with Helen. Yeah, that that'd be another uh, story. Because we have a list of nicknames that we're putting together. Oh. And so. Do you have the list that was before? Well, this is the list that's been around. Yeah, because and Bill Buffo and his, yeah, yeah, his son yeah. worked on it. So Chooch got his name from being saying choo 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 choo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's great. Anybody that you can think of in town with a nickname that maybe... I've read that list, and I couldn't think of any. Okay. Uh -uh. All right. Okay, so you get married. What year did you get married? 1951. 1951. And settled down to a life in Louisville. Right. We went. We lived in Greeley until he graduated, and then he went on and got his master's degree. And we lived in Greeley then. And then we moved to Louisville. And we lived down across the railroad track from his mother and father on Rex Street in a two-room two house. It was a bedroom and a kitchen. It had no running water, no bathroom, uh, just a little coal stove. And we lived there for about six months with a new baby. And that would be Reggie. What year was she born? 52. 52. Mm -hmm. And then after that... Living down there. We moved, then we moved to Je a house on Jefferson and rented that for eight years. And then from Jefferson, we moved to this house. So in the eight years that you lived there, then you would have had 
Jeannie, right? I had Je yeah, Jeannie and Shelly. And Shelly. Mm -hmm. So just girls. Three girls. What was that like? Raising it was three great. Three girls. It was great. They never ever. I can truthfully say I had three girls who never gave me, or Eugene, one minute's problem. Wow. Never. Never That's had great. a problem with them, and they were very popular. And you know, they were the cheerleaders in the and the. Um, the the homecoming queens and the whole bit. Never ever did we ever have a problem with them. That's great. So Reggie's a teacher. Reggie's a teacher. And where does she teach at? Uh, Louisville Elementary. What, what what grade? Is kindergarten. Kindergarten. Okay. And Shelley's at um, the director of the Chamber of Commerce. Followed in her father's footsteps. Yeah. yeah. And Jeannie passed away. Uh, in 1994 um, from hemolytic anemia. Is that something in the family? Is that no. something that it just the person develops? She, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not a hereditary thing. Well, what about grandchildren? Have five. Have five grandchildren. Josh is married and, and um, th these are Reggie's two children. Okay. Josh is married to um, Pam. They have two children, were, were my great grandchildren. And Pam, um, is she from here? Or? No, Pam is from Denver. Okay. And uh, Josh is a fireman, a paid fireman in South Metro. And their children are uh, Elizabeth, who at this time is three, almost, well, she'll be four in December. And then we have the little boy, Mitchell, and he is 19 months. And then uh, Jeannie's daughter, a son, is uh, 30 years old. He lives in Denver. And his name is Jacob. And then uh, Shelley's has a son who's married to Tiff. His name is Joey. He's married to Tiffany, and they live in Arvada. And she has um, Katie, who's a senior, going to be a senior in college. So it's a pretty busy life. Uh, yes, it's a fun life. Fun life. Now let's talk about your volunteer work for the yeah, your volunteer work for, for the city of Louisville. I mean, just for Louisville. You were very instrumental in, in several things here in town. One of them was the sports for girls. Mm -hmm. So you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, there. well, having three girls, and there were no sports for the girls, nothing for them to do. So Eugene and I decided that we would start a summer sports program. Uh, we started out thinking we'd just do volleyball because there was a tennis court up at the next to the community building of the art center and uh, so we we started out with volleyball it was the kids just the girls just loved it but so did the boys they came and watched anyway then we decided well let's start some uh, a softball team we went to the city asking for some equipment and they said no, that it was all, you know, the money was for the Little League stuff. And um, Halo Scarpello was the head of the boys' uh, Little League. Mm -hmm. And he about had a fit. Well, we pursued it and pursued it. Because you were trying to get some money, to money get for, the girls. for the girls. okay. And, and that would mean that we would maybe take some from them. From Finally, the city decided to give us equipment, and they gave us uh, all the equipment that we needed, the bats, the balls, the catchers, the bases, the, you know, the things that we needed. So we started girls softball. So did you start by just playing other girls in town or, or by playing no, other towns? No, there were other, there were other uh, teams in other towns. Boulder had great teams. And um, Westminster, we played Miss Westminster, Arvada. So we played a lot of out-of-town games, and they'd come here. So you basically had to work with leagues from other towns to get into the slot. So that right, they right. And slot. they were all, especially the Boulder teams, they were all very experienced ball players. So did all three of the girls play? Kay, Shelley was too little, but, but Jeannie and Reggie did. And did you... 
I mean, did you ever take a championship or? No. Did you guys coach? Were you guys coaching? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you and Eugene were Yeah, coaches? we coached. Mm -hmm. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So any other, I mean, were you active with uh, scouts or no. anything like that? No, no. I, I had a campfire, a, a campfire group when my kids were just babies. I mean, they were little, and I, I had a group of campfire girls for a while, but uh, that's all. So do, did you uh, uh, guys belong, like, to the uh, uh, fireman's office? Was yeah. Eugene, Eugene was a fireman? Was a, yeah, Eugene was a fireman for 26 years, and uh, we, and I was on the, with the women that started the fireman auxiliary. We, we had had a fireman dinner, and there was a fire out at the highway mine, and they, the guys were working so hard out there, and they, so we were bringing them coffee and this sort of thing. And we decided, well, why not have an auxiliary? And so we started. That's how the auxiliary so got started. That's how. The, and, and you know that was that was a very going organization for many many. Yeah. I don't know if it still is so much. I don't think that. It I don't is. even think they have one. Yeah, but for many many years, that was a really uh, important organization in town. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a nice, fun, and it was fun. Yeah. Did you do any of the races? I never did. You, coached. You coached. I coached the girls a couple of times, a couple of years in a row, but and they didn't do anything either, the ones I coached. <laughs> <laughs> so then uh, what other, uh, I know you were very instrumental in the museum and all that. Was mm -hmm. there anything before that that you, that you volunteered for? Uh, I think probably that I can remember, no, but so the, here then we are, 30 softball, years. Yeah, girl softball yeah. started because, yeah, and then the fireman's auxiliary, mm -hmm. and then here comes the museum. I think, I can't remember if the museum came first or the golf course. Oh, the golf, let's talk about Yeah, that. because okay. I was on the. I was a chairman of the committee to get the golf course in town. That was a big undertaking. Yeah, it was. It was. So talk about that a little bit. Well, we, we, we decided that we needed a golf course. So uh, formed a committee and didn't know where we were going to put it. But the, 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 the city was kind of looking at the uh, land on the mesa on the uh, west side of the... Um, Table Mesa? Or, or yeah, the, the Mesa, Davidson, um, Davidson Mesa, Davidson yeah, Mesa yeah, uh -huh. across the street uh, on the on the west side of uh, McCaslin. Yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, Johnny Shalina was on the committee, and he said no, that it should be on the land where it is now because of the trees and the natural terrain and so forth. So this is the way we worked, trying to get it there. And so how did you go about purchasing the land or getting the land or how was that? How did the that, city did the, the city, city did it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so there you so are we, ahead of helping bring another of Louisville's um, uh, entities into town that's quite a big thing now with the with the golf uh, tournament they have every year. Yeah. 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 And so then there's the hospital. Yeah. So you were instrumental in, in helping mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Henrietta and I were instrumental yeah. there. Mm -hmm. And then you also volunteered out there? Yeah, I did for 10 years. And you were on the board also, right? Yeah, for, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's great. for four or yeah. five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then let's talk about the museum. Okay. Tell us how that came about. I know we talked about it a little bit, but... Uh, well, I think I told you about the the, the land. That's right. The yeah, land being, being the tomatoes and uh -huh. we sold it and that. And the, the, the house was the first building, then the store. Then the store, and then they then when uh, when my mother died, she lived in the house, the Jordanelli house. And when she died, the people donated that house to the city. So the city moved it to the uh, museum campus that we have now. And did you work on the restoration of the house? Not the house, Not no. The house. 
Mm -mm. As a matter of fact, uh, we had mostly, all, most of the restoration of the house was volunteered by professionals. The oh, wooden yeah. floors and the, we put all new hardwood floors in because the house didn't have hardwood floors. And um, any of the remodeling that was, or, or anything that was done, was done by paid people. By paid people, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I think Louisville has a great debt of gratitude um, for all your years of hard work and, and, and uh, bringing forth some really important businesses, well, or not businesses, well, the golf course and that. So mm -hmm. I think we have to thank you for that. We want to talk about, um, oh yeah, and, and I know that you got the Pioneer Award for for the, um, is that the, historic, the, museum, the yeah, historical? Yeah, the historic uh, museum, give, the, the uh, uh, commission okay. gives and, that award. And so, uh, how long were you on that commission? 30 years. 30 years of volunteer work on the commission. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That must have been quite exciting. It was. It was. I enjoyed every minute of it. And uh, it just got to the point where, first of all, I think you can... You need new blood. To get new things going, you need new blood. And so this is one of the reasons I gave up being on the commission. Well, I and I miss it. Yeah. But 30 years of volunteering is, you know, something to yeah. tip our hat to. Yeah, but I enjoyed it. Well, we have um, a question we want to talk to you about, the magnolia tree. Oh, Yeah out in New York. Can you give us the story of the magnolia tree? Well, it was planted, I assume, soon after the house was built. So I would say when the house was completed, it was about 1931. So I assume that that tree was planted in anywhere from 1931 to 1935. It's been there, it, it, it's been there uh, and bloomed and gotten Gotten and bloomed or gotten frozen a million times. It's the largest magnolia tree in Colorado. We got a certificate from the, um, uh, I don't know if it was the forestry or who we got the certificate from, but they, it was a runner up between our tree and one at Regis College. And uh, through all the measurement and stuff, they found out that ours is the biggest. So we got the certificate. So, and do you know why they chose a magnolia tree? I have tree no or, idea. That's just not no in this area. But, I know, yeah. it, but no. And now I see quite a few around town. So, so you have the oldest one in Colorado. In the biggest. The biggest one in Colorado. Mm -hmm. The biggest. Wow. I don't know that it's the oldest. the oldest. Well, before we end, I guess I would like to ask you what words of wisdom do you, would you leave for the younger generation uh, now um, as far as volunteering and, and uh, to make our life a better life, you know? Well, I just feel that there's no greater thing than volunteering. I think that, that you can, um, just by volunteering, you show that you're interested interested in what's going on and um, and it gives a great satisfaction I guess that's about the only thing I could say about it do you feel like we have as many volunteers uh, now than we've had in the past I, I just feel like uh, myself the, the generation of the Second World War veterans and, and their wives and they're great people to volunteer and, and they've really developed you know mm -hmm. the organizations in town that we have and everything uh, what was your question about volunteers do you see uh, the younger generation oh coming forth and yeah I do I do I really do I, I, I think that those who have the time are coming forward. Mm -hmm. But there are so many, it takes almost 
in this day and age, two incomes. And I think this is why it looks like there's just not as many that, that want to volunteer, but it's just that they just don't have the time to do it. Yes, and that's what the point I was trying to get to mm -hmm. is that it's, it's, it's tough. It is. You know? It's tough. It's tough for these kids because the, when they come home, then they're rushing, running their kids to play Little League or whatever, ballet lessons, you know, all those kind. No, I, I, I think the ones who want to volunteer and can do. So Louisville has been named by uh, one of uh, Money, Money, Money Magazine, Magazine. Yeah. yeah, as the best small town in the United States to live in. Uh, what are we going to do to keep it that way? But well, of course, we knew that it was the number one city in the United States from day one. I mean, it just took Money Magazine a little while to find out. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the thing about it is um, just continue what we're doing. And I think that we'll stay on track. Great. It's, it's, it's a wonderful town to be raised in. Oh, it is. It is. To raise your children in. It is. And what's so neat about Louisville is it, it, like my uncle used to say, every road leads to Louisville. Because people leave, but they all come back. I think that's a wonderful ending to our interview. Oh. Every road Leaves to Louisville, right. Very good. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, you're it's welcome. It's gracious to have us come in and spend this time with you. Well, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Welcome. I enjoyed it.